food. Here is a big fat potato. They grow really well here in Washington. But it's potatoes like this that got hit really hard by the potato blight in Ireland. But today, farmers use fungicides to best prevent their plants from getting diseases caused by fungi and protists. But you have to realize that not all fungi are bad. There are lots of good types of fungi, like those that produce penicillin, and the mysterious and unknown mushrooms of the forest. Next best thing. Oh, is this your home? Yep. Oh my! <laughs> it looks like you're making dinner. What are we having? Mushrooms. Oh, I love mushrooms, but I've heard some of them are dangerous. Sweetie Pumpkin, why do you suppose the mushrooms are always associated with eerie environments and poisonous potions? I mean, what's the deal with that? Why do they get such a bad rep? So to answer this, I think we're going to have to explore a little bit more about mushrooms. So, mushrooms are just fruiting bodies of the fungi. But now remember, not all fungi have fruiting bodies like this. So there are several broad categories that define the different kinds of fungi. The major types of fungi are usually divided up by their reproductive structures. And if we were to look at those different types of fungi, we'd see four major groups. The first are the basidiomycota, or the club fungi. And they look like what most people think of when they think of fungi. Then you have the ascomycota, or the sac fungi, which include the yummy morals and truffles. On bread, you'll often find bread molds like this zygomycota. And finally, in moist soil, or like in some species, occasionally parasitizing species of frogs, you'll find the chytridomycota. So there's several types, but most of what you'll see in the forest on a stroll are the club fungi and the sac fungi. The rest are just pretty small. But remember, most of what you're seeing here are the fruiting bodies, only a small piece of the fungi. Take that away, and the fungi still remain in the soil. Well, the major part of the fungus is actually in the form of the mycelium, which lives in this log. See, mycelium are little fibers that strewn through all throughout this wood and break it down. As it breaks down the wood, it breaks down nutrients and it gets recycled back into the forest. What's left over, that's food for the fungus. When conditions are right, the mycelium form together, they make a diploid fruiting body, which is basically what we got here, the mushroom. So now we're in the mountains of North Idaho and we're gonna look for mushrooms with the Spokane Mushroom Club. Hey, wait up, you guys. I want to see what mushrooms you guys got. I'm going across the creek right there and then down the creek. And uh, there are the late fall oyster mushrooms growing on logs down there. I've never mushroomed with anyone that carries their suitcase with them. And so we were off. Look at these white ones. Oh, right here. Mm -hmm. Just that little guy going in. Okay, so yeah, it did seem like there were mushrooms everywhere we looked. 
There were mushrooms of all shapes and sizes and colors and smells and, and, and weird textures. The big slimy top of it. But it was awesome. Everywhere were mushrooms. How many kinds of mushrooms are here in this forest here? Uh, 5,003. What? Really? About 5,000. Oh my gosh. The rough figure we give, and uh, not, not at any one time, but their right. mycelium is all through the soil all the time, and uh, a certain percentage of them come up when wet like this. And yeah, they were all cool in their own little way. Some of these guys might be little, but mushrooms and fungi play a huge role in the forest ecosystem. The more I found out, the more I became fascinated with these fruiting bodies of the forest. Why do you think there's so many people out there that don't like mushrooms? because they don't know anything about it. Well, because they're not warm and fuzzy, for one. Without mushrooms, you wouldn't have a forest. I just think they're neat. They're pretty, and they're all over. And, and they're all so beautiful. And it's fun. I'm still learning which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones. But even seeing a bad one is fun. You know, kind of, it's like tuning your instinct on a hunting dog. We looked for mushrooms all day long, even when the rain came. I'm officially soaked now. And well, it didn't stop anyone from the hunt. I learned a lot about mushrooms that day. And at the end of the day, we put our baskets together and kind of like this show and tell about what we all found. It was cool. What did you guys get? Wow, those are cool. Oh, look at how beautiful these are. Right, so, chicken pot pie. I don't have them up. Lion's mane. And I'm gonna Lion's cook mane. it up tonight. These are supposed to be wonderful, but I don't know what, why. They say it smells a little bit like apricot. Kind of. I think it smells like dirt. These are uh, edible honey. They're very good. It's Beautiful. Fine. Fry them and put sugar on it. They're so yummy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right. What do we say? Say matsutake. Matsutake. Now there's lots of things you can do to learn more about mushrooms. Here's some suggestions. You can join a community mushroom club. That way you have all the resources at your fingertips for local mushrooms. And there's lots of books out there too. You know, it can take years to be a professional mushroom identifier. So it's really important that you can't just go through the forest and just pick up any mushroom and start eating it because you could really get sick or you could even kill yourself. So for right now, just stick with the mushrooms that are found in the store. That's right. And as always, from the mountaintops to the mushroom forest, we encourage you to never stop exploring your world. Never stop exploring your world! Woo! We're cooking them up right now. Sugar pop, sweetheart. Hey, sugar lips. Hey, sweetie pumpkin. What are you doing? <laughs>